Romans. <laughs> Countrymen, lend me your ears. I come here to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do live after. The good is often turned in their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you that Caesar was ambitious. And if it were so, it was a grievous error. And grievously has Caesar answered it. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Listen up. I'm here to talk about Caesar. But I ain't going to brag on the old boy. You see, we all, we know, we all tend to remember the bad stuff folks do to us, and we tend to forget the good stuff they do. Same thing with Caesar. Now, Bubba done told y'all that Caesar weren't no good. <laughs> and, well, maybe Bubba was right. But ain't no sense in worrying about it now, because Caesar, he done kicked it. I just said the same thing in two drastically different fashions. <laughs> the first was, of course, Mark Antony's speech to the funeral crowd in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, as was penned by the bard himself. The latter was essentially the same soliloquy, but delivered by someone that probably goes by the nickname Haas or Biggin. <laughs> and I, I am allowed to make fun because I did grow up in rural Mississippi. So there. Our society, you know, we tend to reward those who use language beautifully and creatively, and we stigmatize those who use it coarsely. And, and I don't necessarily think that this is wrong. Beautiful use of language, creative use of language, helps us to visualize abstract concepts. It expands our cognitive capacity. Creative use of language it really can, it really can spur innovation. Now, my fear is that as our world becomes ever more, ever more digitized and the need for creators of this digital content, the demand ex increases exponentially, my fear is that we are doing a great disservice to our young people by not pursuing the same path in coding and computer science education that we have traditionally taken with language arts. And I say language, and I stress arts. Yes, language is an art. If you have any doubt, I would refer to you to the spoken word performance that Atlas had on this very stage just a few moments ago. That was art, that was fantastic. That was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yes, language is an art, and code Code is the language. Code is the 21st century common tongue. Code is understood the same in Nepal as it is in Nebraska. Code is the way that people communicate with machines and machines communicate with each other. Code is a language. And as we move forward, we're going to value people the most that can use that language effectively and use it creatively and use it beautifully. This is the concept of creative coding. Now, when I, when I first proposed to do this talk, the focus was on advocating for education of code and computer science at a younger age. Teaching, really inter introducing younger students to the idea of, of code and computer science. And true to the spirit of TED, this is absolutely, absolutely an idea worth spreading. The issue was it was an idea worth spreading about five or ten years ago. There had been some absolutely fabulous TED Talks given on the advantages of introducing code and computer science to children at a young age. Just as there had been some absolutely phenomenal TED Talks given on the necessity of reintegrating creativity into our education system. And you've even you've, you've heard several speakers on this stage today address that very same thing. And I will say that, that there is movement. There is movement in this direction, at least on the side of introducing code and computer science into schools. About half of the states in the United States today now count computer science as a core math or science. 
there is movement. You'll see stories around the nation of schools, sometimes elementary schools, actually holding their own hackathons. And I think this is absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. And, and while in many instances we're not introducing the concept as early as some of us would like and we're not moving as rapidly as most of us would like, the inertia is there. We are moving in the right direction. So my question here today is, are we moving in the right direction the right way? For the last several decades, our education system has, in general, shifted from one that concentrates on critical thinking, a classical liberal arts education, to one that is focused on a high degree of specialized, of technical specialization. And, and I will say that I don't think this was on purpose. I think that our education system has essentially become an elongated workforce development program. And I think that was in response to uh, the demands of the advanced, of the 20th century advanced industrial economy. And in those, in those terms, it actually did serve us well for a few decades. But today, today, we are faced with, probably for the first time, being competitive in a full-fledged global knowledge economy, the first time. And our success in this knowledge economy is going to be hampered by a wall of our own construction. And what is this wall? It is the wall that our education system has placed between the critical thinking, creative aspects, and the technical aspects. A wall separating the technical from the creative. And I want to say, make no mistake about it, that this wall is as artificial, this wall is as artificial and economically oppressive as the one that once ran through the center of Berlin. So how is this wall, how is this wall detrimental specifically to coding education, to digital product creation? Well, I, I want to just briefly, for example, explore a common education pathway to give you an idea. A student that's interested in graphic arts is likely to be put on a path in a graphic arts program. Same time, a student that's interested in coding, code development, is going to be probably shepherded into a computer science program that has a high, fo a high degree of focus on the technical aspects of code. Now, the graphic art student will receive some exposure to coding, probably in the guise of website development. The computer science student will receive less exposure to the principles of graphic art and realistically, how much exposure do you think either has to creative writing? Not very much. Not very much. So what's the result? This is the wall. The wall between creative, the wall between technical. What is the result? Well, the result is all too often applications that may do wonderful things, but nobody can figure out how to use. Okay? We've all, we've all heard the joke about the user interface design by the engineer or applications that are stunningly beautiful that don't work. We really have to bring down this wall, especially in regards to coding education and digital product development. Now, remember the overarching concept here that code is a language. We don't say we're going to calculate code. We say we're going to write it. We don't ask who computated a certain program. We ask who is the author. By every definition, code is absolutely a language. And teaching the technical side without teaching the creative side of coding is tantamount to teaching a student how to diagram a sentence without teaching them what that sentence means. Now, I do want to take a moment. There are detractors of this approach. I want to address that. And, you know, let me stress, everyone has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. Some people will say, no, 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 Tim, you're wrong. It's better to focus on one thing and to do that thing perfectly. And I will say that there are 
some instances in which a high degree of specialization is preferable. You do not want to find out that your proctologist is moonlighting in drywall repair. Am I right, doctor? It's pre preferable. Do y'all think moonlighting was a poor choice of words there or the perfect choice of words? That can also be referenced back to my earlier statement about everyone having an opinion, right? So detractors of a creative coding program will also say that, you know, code, code is so specialized that it really doesn't need to be taught to a general population. And to these people, I say, well, I remember a time when we thought that language was so specialized that we didn't really need to teach the general population how to write it. That time was called the Dark Ages. And I think that we all can agree that that was a failed economic model. So I do understand that all this is well and good to discuss in theory, in philosophy, but also sometimes you've got to put your binary code where your mouth is. So I want to take a few moments to talk about an initiative that we're launching in my state to promote the concept of creative coding. My firm is partnering with our state's, board, uh, our state's college board, our institutions of higher learning, our state's film commission, and a software development company to produce or, or to develop a, what we're calling an interactive game development incubator. Now the way this got started was our state's college board wanted to create a, essentially a video game that would promote college access. We saw the opportunity to work with a software development firm to create an environment in which students would be exposed to the game development process and actually serve in an understudy capacity, um, in an understudy capacity to that process. And it's, it's our goal, we're going to make sure that these students are not only pulled from multiple colleges across the state, but from multiple programs within those colleges. Yes, the obvious, a game development program within a community college, but also from the film school, also from fine arts programs, and we're going to make sure that we are inclusive of students with majors in such liberal arts things as philosophy and English. Now, at the same time, the way this works is at the same time these students will serve as an understudy within this software development process, they will be put on their own track. And their own track is to develop from concept to realization their own interactive application, essentially their own video game. And what we fully expect to happen within this incubator is that these young people not only come out of this process with a marketable product, but they come out of this with a bona fide software development company that they own. This concept is bringing students together of different skill sets and putting them in an environment that they might have never have otherwise been exposed to with the objective of being creators within the knowledge economy. We believe that this is a replicable model for economic development within the knowledge economy. We believe that for it to succeed, for us to succeed in the knowledge economy, we're going to be dependent on people that possess both the creative and the technical skills to create these products in this digital environment. Now, I'd just like to conclude this evening by speaking directly to the educators and the people that have the ability to influence education policy. Make no mistake, we are in a knowledge economy. People that can work proficiently within that environment, they'll be good workers. But people that can work creatively, the people that work creatively within a knowledge economy, those people will be the owners. And we want to own the means of production, not be a slave to it. And educators, you hold the key. You hold the key to this. You can lead the charge in teaching code as both science and art. Because the future belongs to those people that marry those two things together. And you have the ability to be the matchmaker. Thank you.